What's up, guys? Welcome back. Got another Masters match for you. Um, really enjoy putting this content together. It's really fun recording these matches, looking back. I learn a lot from watching this stuff, just reviewing my performance and application of technique and just how I handle pressure and the decisions I make and everything like that. So, yeah, I've got another Masters match for you. It's against the same team as the opponent from the previous video. So it's still week 13 of the season. And I'm working a little bit on that second ball break just to sort of test things out. And I didn't hit those super well. Um, by the way, uh, my opponent is new to me. Um, just was getting to know him a little bit here today. So I don't really know too much about his game. Um, it seems like he's got lots of experience, um, kind of has been around for a while, but uh, yeah, I don't. I didn't know too much about his game before I played him today. It can be kind of fun coming in without having some preconceived notion of what to expect from your opponent, and especially when you are preparing for big tournaments or playoffs, championships, things like that. You have to just assume that your opponent is a monster, right? Don't take it for granted. Don't look up their Fargo or whatever before your match. Just assume that they're going to be a monster. And play your best game. So opening up here, uh, by the way, YouTube stuff, thanks for checking us out. Um, do all the things, helps out the channel, and uh, shows me that you guys like the things that I'm putting out there, so I can do more of this. But opened up, I did make a stripe on the break, despite not hitting them super well. So I'm trying to piece my way through this, and I immediately recognize that the 14 ball is going to be a potential problem for me. So I have to determine how I'm going to get back around for the 14. And naturally, the 9 ball can take you to the 14, which would have been good. So the hope off that 13 was to get behind the 9 enough that I could get down for the 14 and then deal with these after the 14. It's congested, though. With that second ball break, not really hitting them well, um, not making a lot of balls, there's a big cluster down table. So here, the temptation might be to come into the nine ball with pretty heavy right hand spin and come into the stack. You don't really know what you're going to get from that. It's not guaranteed to get shape on the 14, but I think now what I'm trying to do is, is play aggressive. I got a little help from the five that sent me back down towards the 14. And now I have an edge on the 14 ball, which is good, because I think the 15 and the 11 are blocked by the 3. But the 14 doesn't bank back in the opposite corner because of the 4 ball. So at this point, I think what I size up is a defense. I'm going to leave him down table. Very low speed, just kind of drive a ball to a rail, but I don't. Kind of silly. I, I could have played that firmer. It looked like I was going to sell out the four ball either way. So just a simple safety to move my ball into a playable position. It's not a strong safety. I wouldn't advocate for that kind of thing. Probably you're better off coming off the 14 and leaving him on top of the four, like up here. You don't really want to be playing safeties that, well, first of all, you don't want to be giving up all in hand, but you also don't want to be playing a safety that is sort of daring your opponent to get out uh, because even weaker players will surprise you sometimes and you just uh you can't afford to be surprised in situations like this so you can tell his experience is coming through here right he immediately sizes up the cluster and is going to use ball in hand very powerful position have ball in hand to clear out oh man bit of a stretch a bit of a, a kind of pokey stroke and um Kind of slid off it, kind of miscued. Um, yeah, tough. You hate to see it. Um, but he, I mean, he chose the right shot, right? He chose the seven ball. He was going to clear out the cluster and deal with problems early. But lets me back on the table with ball in hand myself. Get out from here, right? Anybody watching this video should be out from here. Maybe at home, your practice table, under no pressure. Overplayed that, for sure. We needed to be kind of straight on the 11. 
14 is the key ball, sends you right to d8. But we're still okay. Eleven still takes you towards the fourteen. Maybe we graze the two. We do graze the two. Overplayed that as well. I think I remember this shot. I think I remember either being super weirdly thin on the fourteen, or that I was going to have to consider rail first. No, I'm shooting straight at it. Must have felt like I had the straight cut. Oh, but I grazed the eight. That's what it was. That's so silly. I had plenty of room off the eleven ball. That's three ball-in-hand turnovers in this first game. Weird. Weird. Especially coming off of a win, because I had just played that other match. Felt really strong in that game. So, coming in against an unknown opponent. Um, not sure, guys. That's a weird one. But pressure and nerves do weird things, and they can they can come up at unexpected times. Again, you, he uses ball in hand really appropriately. Clears out the four because it doesn't go past the eight. Gets himself down behind the six and the one. Had plenty of options. I think he was probably playing to get on the six or the one, but he had the three as a backup. Second guesses his position a little bit here. The three takes you right to the one and the six. They're on either side of those. They're go, they're all gonna go. He's got to deal with the 7 because it's out in the middle of the table. But he's fine on this 6 ball. A bit of a stretch here. Kind of decided to stroke through that ball instead of coming back around for the 1. So he played himself into the 1 ball. 5 twos wired, it looks like. We can play those. Doesn't seem like he's really choosing his spots, though. Maybe just trusting the open balls. Lines up on the seven. Bit of a cut on the seven. Not really sure if he was going to try to float over for the five. Probably how he missed it, though, in thinking that he could float over for the five. A natural position on the eight ball there. You don't have to do anything. It's that first game. Let's hope that that's out of our system. Three ball in hand turnovers in that game. Uh, I do believe I stick with the second ball break though. Just because in this format the eight ball is a win and I'm trying to see how well so that works. I'm, I'm intending on coming off the stack, off the long rail and back into it to spread it out more. Still kind of clustered up there on the top long rail, but made a ball and just going to pick our patterns. I'm looking there at the 13 to see if it possibly goes in off the two ball into the side. I don't think it did. So I know that eventually I'm going to have to get above the 13 to play it down where the 11 is now, which is going to mean moving the 11 first and then finding a way to get above the 13. So that's where you start to pattern this out. Could look like 12, 11, get above the 13, or you've got the, the 15 in the side pocket here to block you up, to back you up, I mean. Whoa, zoom. That's a bit much. Luckily, we had the 15. Hold this ball for the nine ball, it looks like. Come, come head on into the 15. Don't think that I ended up with a line on this guy. Really slow, soft touch. Tried to hold it too much. Just shot it into the point. Trying to hold it way too much. I did also have to figure out how to solve the 14 because the 14 doesn't have an easy pocket. It would probably go here in this side. So if you ended up below the 14 in here, you could cut it. But part of the idea might have been to get on the nine ball such that I could get 
into the 14 or below the 14. Left him a cut on the four ball, which sends him around. He could come over. Two ball's going to back him up. Five goes in the side. Seven and six go in the corner. Floats off the side. He overplayed that one a little bit. The two still backs him up. The three goes as well. That's what he's looking at. I wonder if he left the two ball because he felt like it was blocking. Got the seven backing him up here. The two is always there. The one could be his key ball. Lead him over the eight. Played into the seven, but kind of steered it a little bit. You could see the body movement there. My 13 is still not out of trouble. Still have to find a way to get above that ball, so make it playable. Fourteen cuts in the side, but it doesn't really take me where I want to go. Don't remember if the 14 goes past the 15. Valley table pockets, it probably does. I've got a rail first option on the 11. That's what I'm looking at right now. So come deep into the rail and then use spin. Make sure it takes you towards that ball. It turns the cue ball loose a little bit, but then at least, yeah, you make that one. Uh, then at least you are going to be above your 13. That's the issue. You're really turning the cue ball loose. It's a thin cut with spin in it. Sends it going around. Some pace. If anything, you could let the stroke out a bit more. Bouncing back off this rail could give you the 9 or the 14 or even the 13. But I left myself about as far away from my shots as I could possibly be. The 14 probably goes from here. 13 definitely goes. I'm looking at a back cut on the 15 in the side, probably just because it's close to a pocket, and I want to use that to get position. So it takes a delicate touch to make this one. Oh man, yeah, that side pocket's not cooperating. I leave it right on the point. Bad spot. We all know that's a bad spot on a pool table. I'm giving him some chances. Given my opponent plenty of chances here. At the seven, you can draw back into the rail, bounce back over for the two. Yeah, you can you can roll through it too, go high ball. That works. Two's always there backing you up. So you can go six, two, one. Looks like he's going high ball here. He's rolling through it. That works. I would have been tempted to go low on that six ball. But basically, yeah, it's a stop shot on the two and even a stop shot on the one from there. Because you're going to be here. Stop shot on the one and then cut in the eight. He goes for the one, which is an interesting choice. I'm not, not really sure what the thinking was there. I certainly would have just shot the two full to stop it and play the one. And even if the one doesn't send you towards the eight, you can cut in the eight from there. That's one of those where you, you try to simplify things. Minimize cue ball travel, too. Maybe he wasn't straight enough on the two ball to hold it for the one. From here, it looked like it could have just been shoot it into the point for a stop shot. So I cut the 14 here to try to get back above the 9 and the 13. And that one's touchy. I came into it maybe even a little too full, but I've still got the 9 as an option. And then it's going to be tough to get off the 9 ball and shape the 13, because we know it doesn't go in off the 2. And the 15, again, is pretty much on that point. A side pocket. You just kind of float under the 13 here. 
That's well played. I had to cheat it to make sure I wasn't splitting it on the one. And I lined up. I played this shape specifically to, in the hopes that you bank this 13 off the 15 to move the 15 into a better position. It's a good plan. You've also got to think about getting under the 15 ball. So you want to hit this with a high ball, which tightens up the angle on the bank. Nice. You see the action on the cue ball, so where it didn't go off the 15, but cue ball digs into the rail and floats back up table. If you like that kind of stuff, do the YouTube things for it. Uh, playing a high ball there forces the cue ball forwards, bounce back, bounces back up to that top long rail. And I'm below the 15 well enough that it's playable without scratching. Despite how it looks right now, it looks like a natural scratch. But I am able to cheat it a little bit and play into the point. The bottom edge of the point. <laughs> but I also knew that I wouldn't be able to bounce out enough to get a favorable cut on the 8. So an unfortunate outcome here from a good position play, 13 to 15. 13 to 15. a tough tough spot i remember thinking about banking the eight back down here but it naturally sends the cue ball towards the corner pocket the eight didn't go back here past the one safety's not really on because anywhere you leave the cue ball up here the two ball is always going to be available Maybe the only thing I could have done is try to thin the 8, leave the cue ball down here so that the 8 came up to block the 2. Uh, I'd call no shot. I'm not trying to make the 8 ball here. My decision was to bank the 8 into the 1 ball to, yeah, to try to block the 1, leave it on top of the 1 somehow to complicate the run out, which, which worked out pretty well. The speed was good too. I didn't, didn't over or underplay it. The 8 ended up right near the 1 ball. So he's got a decision to make here. Playing safe off the one is dangerous because you are going to nudge the eight most likely. And it's hard to leave the cue ball in a position where your opponent is not going to have a look at the eight. So it's sort of do or die. You got to go for the two. Yeah. Go for the shot off the two to get the breakout. And leaves himself under the eight ball, behind the eight ball here. I don't think he ended up with a look at the one. So again, really tough position. You consider the one rail kick behind the eight ball. That's maybe what he's sizing up here to get the back side of the one. You consider the one rail this way. You consider a two rail where you're coming in like one of these. Hmm. Don't know. I'm not sure if he was just trying to catch the backside of the one ball there or not. But his stance, he was kind of standing like almost completely straight for that shot. But yeah, unfortunately miscued and gives up ball in hand on the eight ball here. Not a gimme necessarily, like you need to make sure you stroke that well to make sure it's not a double hit or you don't roll through it or anything, but ball in hand on the eight is a good place to be if there's an open pocket. So that puts me, puts me up two. Good solid second ball break there off the long rail back into the stack. Decent spread. Cue ball didn't really escape too well. What do we make? Two stripes? So I remember this one feeling very doable. The nine ball does go past the one. So from here, you go nine, 11, 14, 10, 15, eight, right? 
So it's kind of connect the dots. That was wild because I hit the nine in such a way that it grazed the one and still went. So really what you wanted to do was play the nine, leave here, 11, 14 goes in this corner. You got shape on the 10 on the side, 15 to the eight. You should follow all those squiggles. That was the theory. Uh, now instead, we can't really play the 11 because you can't hold it for the 15. It sends you sort of wild. We can play the 15. Punching it back for the 14 or the 11 would be nice. And I, I hammered that thing, but I didn't cheat the pocket enough to punch it and leave myself a decent shot. So we're behind the 11 ball, and we're looking at a long combination shot, 11 to the 14, which is immediately what I get down on, so I guess I must have felt good about it in the moment. But I didn't aim it at all. And listen, Valley Pockets are forgiving, but they're not that forgiving. You do have to make the ball go in. It doesn't just go in on its own. So I missed that combination, which is silly. I should not have had to shoot that combination to begin with. It's one of those table positions where you look at all the layout of the balls and you're like, oh, this is very runnable. I can easily get through this. You don't want to relax on that, right? You still have to, you still have to make it happen. So he's got a complicated layout too. The five, six, and the seven go. The four and the three are pretty dicey. But decides to get rid of that one ball first. Leaves himself pretty long. He's got a makeable shot on the two down in the bottom left-hand corner here as we're looking at it. Just looks like that's what he's lining up. Nice. That one goes in. Nothing easy, though. Uh, maybe a back cut on the seven. I think some players would, would start to look at a defense here, though, because sort of out of shape. Don't remember if his three ball went in the bottom right hand corner or not. Safety. So, pretty good safety. I think the intention was to leave me glued on the six, which would have been pretty brutal, but. I've got to look at the 14. I might even have an edge on the 11, but no pocket for anything really. I start to look at, what was I looking at there? If I play the 11, is it going to take me into the 10 ball? I didn't want to mess with the eight though, because I don't want to send the eight towards a pocket. So I'd consider banking the 14, kind of banking the 14 back here in the corner pocket, which takes the cue ball towards the 10 and the 11. So that's a good play. You have to not only make sure your angle's really on, you don't want to mess with the seven ball, so you do have to play it to the right-hand side of the pocket. Jaws, play it with a good speed and spin so that the cue ball goes into your balls. Pretty close. It's hard to gauge that one. I don't feel too bad about that miss. I think my speed was off, though. I needed to slow that one down a little bit. So I would defense here. I would... Just play behind the three and the four and just get ball in hand. Because you want you want to be able to clean up your seven. You came off the right side of the three under the seven and opened up my 14, which is, man, that's a bad roll. From here, my that's what I went to immediately go look at. My 10 ball no longer goes in the side. So the run is complicated. I go to look at it from the other side, and it's tight. I do remember that being really a really close call, that it has a line on the corner, but you don't want to get too close to that eight ball. If you think it's going to be a bad hit, or you know, if you're watching your opponent play and you think it's going to be a bad hit, you got to call somebody over to watch that, because any disputes go in favor of the shooter. I minimize cue ball travel here, and I decide to get under the 11, simplify this, you make the 11 and float up just a little bit, I am going to try for that 10 ball. Got to gauge your speed here. You've got a natural line. 11 balls kind of guided in by the rail, so the aiming is not complicated here, but the speed control can be. And I got way too focused on the 
sort of stun follow action of the cue ball to get good on the 10. And so miss the 11. I think he's going to, yeah, he's got to go for the four. He's got to get in stroke here. Good stop shot on the four. He's good on the three. Even a stop shot on the three would give him a line on the five. Been kind of high. Nope, he stopped it. Sitting on the rail, but he should still be okay. Cut on the five. You're going to run into the six, pushing it down towards the seven. Let up on that one a little bit. Missed the cut. So I have a good look at the 11. It's a little bit of a back cut. Again, the 10 ball doesn't go here. It doesn't go anywhere on this side of the table. I thought it could go over here. Now I know that it does go in the side. So what I'm looking at is playing a punch shot on the 11 to after I make it, sending the cue ball over to that side of the table. You get a thin cut on the 10 in the side, but it definitely goes. You don't have to worry about trying to float up above the 10. Punch that one. Came up too high. Just let the cue ball go a little bit. And I remember looking at this one for a while. Because it's sort of a dicey situation. And... I'm going to have to pause the video at a certain point here because my battery died at the end of this game. And I replaced it after this particular game was over. But I'm going to pause it right here to show you because we end up... I end up playing a safe. I'm just going to tell you guys what happens. You don't have to take my word for it. I end up playing a safe and coming thin off the right side of the 10 ball to try to leave him behind the 10 ball, which worked out okay. And it pushed the 10 ball back out onto the rail. He played a safe and sent me down table off one of his balls and left me behind the stack down here. So now imagine the cue ball's down here. The 10 is very thin. Um, it ended up about where it is right now. I think I hit it thin enough that it didn't move too much. And what I ended up doing is using my jump cue and a dart technique on the jump cue because I was close to the seven. I played this epic jump shot on the 10 ball that sent it up into the corner and gave me perfect shape on the eight. It was awesome. And I got like a nice little rush and I was all proud of myself. And I went over to walk to the camera and it was just dark. And I was like, come on, like how much of this did it miss? Um, and unfortunately, it missed that epic jump shot for the win. So it put me up three zero. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't I don't have that one for the for the highlight reel. <laughs> Still sticking with the second ball break here. I got a wild ball. A stripe went in the corner pocket. One of the last, if not the last, ball moving on the table. But making stripes and then having this layout when you're stuck with stripes, not a ton of fun. The, I think that's a 9 and the 14 down there on the bottom left. Combo is not wired. You could probably go into the rail below the 14, try to kick that out. So kick the 14 into the 9 to see if you can cut it in. You're going to be turning the cue ball loose, but... You could also play safe. You could just kind of come thin off the 14, leave your opponent behind those two. But I don't have a look at anything else. Stretching. Oh, I missed the ball. Silly. Yeah, bad one. Just a bad one. Lots of ball in hand turnovers in this match. Way more than is usual for me. So he's got a lot of choices here. The three's not completely blocked for him, 
but it is blocking my ball. So a lot of players will leave that three ball as a, as a defensive. His eight ball doesn't go anywhere, so he's got to be thinking about that if he wants to get out. Maybe he goes two to the seven and uses the seven to come into the nine and 14 or come into the eight to nudge it into a playable position. That might be the theory here. I think that was what he was trying to do. Did not end up hitting the eight. He's got to look at the four and the six now. Stretch, but make this one happen. Bridge, so we're not stretching so much. Yeah, either one of those is fine. Six nice and easy, but you could also look at playing the one into the 11 three. Or just playing the one into the rail into the three. Either way, you're going to clear out your shots. The six is a backup. So I like that play. Five will go in after the six. OK. No, he, yeah, he saves the six. That makes sense. And just size up this three-way combo here. The one's going to come off the 11 and down table, depending on how you cut it. That's what he's got to look at. Where on the 11 does he want to hit? With the one. He hit super thin on the 11, and it still went and fluked into the side, which you might not really want here, but got three balls left now. You play into the six, you try to get down below the five again. Or you go for another combo, five into the six, and hope that the, or not hope, but play for the five to lay up in the pocket for you. But he hasn't solved the eight. Played the five straight. Just went right in. Now we got to solve this eight ball. touchy kind of play short side like play for it over here or try to get below it here and play for it on the side okay then cut on the six get down below it good shape for a bank natural bank shot here Oh, yeah, it came wide, it, like overcut that ball. But I'm in a tough spot. I don't think I have a look at the 11 past the 9. I don't think that I can make this happen. Uh, the 9 probably goes, but I don't like that cut from here. So I opt for simple safety. Overplayed that. Like the intention was to just leave him behind the 14. Gotta say that that feels weak. It's a weak play. It was not a strong safety. I had the chance to play a strong safety, but that one didn't show very well. I didn't completely sell out. The eight doesn't easily go anywhere, but he's gonna commit himself to this back cut on the eight in the corner. Not a gimme, that's for sure. There's a lot of distractions, too. There's, you know, lots of stripes left on the table. And, well, he didn't miss it by much. Opened up my 914. So here we are again. Not ball in hand this time, but I've got an open table. Works cut out for me. 14 goes inside. Nine goes nice and easy in the corner. I like the nine to start because then it takes you this direction back towards the center of the table where you're going to have lots of options. 
I remember looking at the 14 because sometimes when you're not feeling good, you're going to want to take the easier shots to build up your confidence again, build up a rhythm again. But you can also just tell yourself to be good, like play a good game and <laughs> play the right shot instead and underplay it like I did. So still nothing's easy. I have to make a long shot. It's, it's straightforward, but you know, pressure's on still. Make this shot, it takes you naturally right towards the 11. I think that was a good call, let the stroke out and bounce over onto the other rail. So 11, 15, and these two guys could be your key balls. You either use one of them to come across table for the eight in the corner or draw back and get above the eight for the eight in the side. That starts to be the pattern I consider. You just want to get in a position on the 15 that takes you towards those other two. That'll work. Underplayed it a little bit. Not as much angle on the 15 as I would have liked. But we're still okay here. Just roll through. Touch of outside. Touch of right hand spin. Come down towards those two. And... You don't want to play the 14 here. It doesn't take you towards the 12. You got to bear down, play the 12, and come back off. So low ball. That's nicely played. Good natural angle to come into the 14. Cue ball naturally wants to go into the rail here and bounce back over. That's what I'm looking at. I do briefly, briefly consider coming back up above the 8 for the side pocket, but you don't need to do that. Don't complicate this. Just stay down. Yeah, hard to watch. Um, I aimed it wrong or I made an adjustment when I was down on the ball, which does not happen for me that often. Something went really, really wonky there. I was just starting to kind of build up a good rhythm, and then I sold out, man. I shot that 14 right into the rail and gave him a, a makeable shot on this 8 ball. Could have been 4-0, 4-1, uh, th uh, 3-1, but uh, silly. There's no reason for that. All right, my opponent is breaking. I remember him saying something like, you gave me that one. <laughs> Like, didn't say anything because I was so mad at myself. Like, yes, not what I need to hear right now, dude. So he made a solid. And a strike. So it's nice to have a choice. a little pokey a little tentative but he's getting there he's have to he has to figure out the 14 and get below that play short side for the bottom right hand corner it's a little touchy but that could be your key ball find a way to get good on that 14 which realistically the 10 ball right now would have been the way to get to the 14. let's see what else yeah the nine you can get above that I remember just fuming about that 14. Missed that one. It, it took me a minute to shake that off. Because it's so silly. I was playing a good out. I think that's what he tried to do there, though, is, is play that 10 and kind of jump it back for the 14 straight down. He just gets down on this. He doesn't really get behind the ball to aim it. I mean, you got enough experience, you kind of know what to do. And that's what you got to do. Just, uh, just shoot him in. <laughs> so that works. Move the 9 into a nice spot. Play a stop shot on the 9, back cut on the 13. That works. A little bit of a drift on the 9, but we're still totally fine here. Back cut on the 13 takes you back above the 12. 12 on the side. 
But a solve for the eight, you know, if you come off the 12, maybe you follow down for the eight and side back there. Oop, kind of let up on that one. Didn't get quite as far as he wanted to go. And now he's looking at a pretty dramatic back cut on the 12. It still goes, it's still playable. If you're turning the cue ball loose, it can be hard to shape the eight. Oh, especially hard to shape the eight when you scratch. Made a good cut shot, though. Made a good thin back cut on the 12 in the side. Yeah, he's, he's frustrated about that one. So open table with ball in hand. Sound familiar? The idea here is choose problem balls, right? Choose the complicated shots that are hard to shape. So I'm going to start on the two, float up for either the seven or the four. I know the six is there as a backup. You could play the three if you really need to. It's open enough that you're going to be hard pressed to get yourself in trouble. So, like I said, four plays, six plays. You don't really want to mess with the six because it sends you into the one. The three played too, if you really wanted it, but I'm going to hit the four and draw back for the seven. That works. Play the seven with authority. Just, again, I'm trying to shake off that weird 14, that 14 ball miss. Pop the seven into the side. You're gonna gonna drag it up for the three. Yeah, a bit of like a stun draw here. Pretty full into the seven. I wanted that stun draw because on this side of the three, you're coming into the three and it sends you back down table towards the one and the six. nicely played almost straight on the one which is great a little bit of a back cut on the one so what i look at is do i want to draw off the one come over to the bottom long rail to get on the six but i realize that's way too complicated the natural angle is going to send me into the six if i roll through the one ball so i decide to roll through it and lay myself up a shot on the six down there which worked out beautifully and now i just choose Either side pocket or corner pocket for the eight ball. You just want to kind of pick your zone. And I'm liking the look of the side. You just kind of come off this and if you underplay it. You could always you take the eight in the corner. But trust your stroke. Punch that in. You're going to get shape. Good pace. Good breath work here. Good mechanics. You're starting to starting to level out. Nice. Stayed still on that one. That brings us to nine ball, four one. Funny how I've got the momentum, like I'm obviously playing well, and something so silly as that 14 ball can throw me off that much. Something that I'm working on with my mental game. You can you can play through that. Like it's not gonna completely derail your match. You can still win matches like this. I mean, obviously, right? Like, I'm up, but you can still win matches like this even when silly things like that happen. That one shot, that one silly shot, is not representative of your whole game. That's not the kind of player that you are. Everybody does silly stuff like that, right? But we get those kind of filters on sometimes with negativity, and we focus so much on the things that go wrong where we have trouble giving ourselves credit for the things that are going well and celebrating those things and psyching ourselves up ride that wave that we create big part of it so that's where i'm at in this match is trying to find that confidence punching the balls over letting my stroke out a little bit not being overly aggressive not taking unnecessary risks but Come with confidence, right? And in some cases, it's psychological warfare, right? You can intimidate your opponent, and you don't have to just outplay them. You can you can sort of psych them out. It's very much very much a reality in this game. It's not how everybody plays, certainly, but you can you could certainly use that to your advantage if you wanted to. Yeah, 
yeah, he tried to pick into the two ball there. I put him in a tough spot. I knew I was sending the two ball down into traffic. So the ball in hand is interesting here because you can go for the run out. And if you're playing your normal nine ball league night, you want to go for points. Um, the two nine combination is on. It's sort of a weird back cut on the nine. But looking at it now, I should have gone for this combination. I should have fired at the nine because if you miss, you don't want to go into it with that attitude, right? But if you miss, you're sending the two ball up table. And then maybe the nine stays in the jaws or whatever, but it's a bit of a two way shot, right? But from here, this looks very playable. I'm surprised I didn't take some more time considering the 2-9. I think I was also excited about the prospect of this shot, though. Which worked out great. I love those. Just kind of float up and hit this combination of cut and spin that perfectly straightens out the line of the cue ball as it comes off the object. I think I just like those too much. <laughs> So a bit of a thin rail shot here on the three, and it naturally wants to bring the cue ball down towards the four. Yeah, weird one, body movement. I was watching my body that time, lifted my head preemptively. I was taking that for granted or worried too much about the shape. So I'm still not back to feeling fully comfortable here. him back on the table though we're gonna sell out this rack aren't we leaves open a four nine he sizes it up yeah he went to go look at it with a lot of other shots in this match he hasn't gotten behind the ball to check his cut angles but with that one, he did. He took an extra breath to size up the cut. And it paid off. He made that combination, so it's 4-2. Makes a ball on the break, and he doesn't have great look at the one. Consider a safety here where you send the cue ball into this rail, into this side of the eight, and the cue's going to end up over here. You just kind of split them. Played into the one, that's fine. Kind of a basic safety, but he left me a look at the one. This is a very makeable cut. And as long as you get the cue ball away from the nine and the five, it will naturally want to come back around and get above the two. So you want to go take a look at this cut on the one ball, man. I didn't look at it. Weird. Maybe I'm not cutting it. I might be going safe. Yeah, I didn't like it. Maybe the reason I didn't go for it is because I felt like it was a scratch shot. The intention was to leave him long behind the seven. I might have felt like I was going to scratch on that one. Probably what it was. spot here yeah it's good he's coming to take a look at it maybe he's gonna go rail first and kick into the one Come into the short rail and kick from behind it risky definitely scratch okay he came pretty thick into the one so good hit well judged one could have gone and I'm hooked behind the three, but this is a pretty natural jump shot for me. So I walk away from my chair with my jump cue in my hand. And with this one, I'm not, I'm not going to want to go elbow up. I'm going to want to go dart because it's pretty close to the three. I also don't want to put a ton of energy into the... Yeah, I break down my jump to the dart. I don't want to put a ton of energy into it with elbow up. So I want to cut the one ball and stopping it, getting a bit of draw on the cue ball would be nice as you float back over here for the two. The other option would be to roll through it. So hop over the three, cut the one, and roll through so that you have this line on the two.
into the table a little bit, so I gotta get up on a knee. Good easy line on it though. Good jump. I almost over jumped it. Almost went too far. I don't have as much practice with the dart jump as the elbow up and a conventional jump technique. I can hit both pretty well most of the time. He had a good look at that one ball, but maybe just misjudged it. He's starting to lose some steam, you can tell. So I've got a very makeable cut on the one ball now. And you can play high inside to roll over for the two. Don't want to mess with the nine and the five again. Oh, I overcut it. Yeah, it's getting silly now. This is like a bunch of misses in a row. So you just start to get get messed up. Like just uh, maybe sort of a play down situation. But overcomplicated it by trying to roll into the seven ball and get good on the two. Not entirely sure what caused that issue, but either way, overcut it. Came thin into the one. Got a lot out of the cue ball. Oh, he's rapid fire now. Made a good cut. Got another back cut on the three. Let's see if he can handle this one. Let's send you towards the four. You want to roll one or two rails off between the eight and the nine. I don't want to overplay this one and get too far away. Yeah. So missed the cut. Sent the cue ball over to the side. And leaves me a reasonably open table here. Very open table. Simple stop shot on the three gets you good on the four. I think I was just looking at where I want to be on the five to come around for the seven. But this is where you just get down to basics, fundamentals, take some breaths, trust your stroke, pretend it's practice at home. <laughs> And I'm, I'm going more rapid pace here. I'm coming to check my lines, make sure that my zone, my position zones make sense. But I'm not spending a lot of time deliberating on different things. Something that's changed a lot with my game. Hit that one really well. Get good on the five. Hard to get bad on that five ball. Make the four. But I'm going to float down here. Get around for the seven. You've got the option to either come all the way to play the seven in the side, or you just stay below this ball. Overplayed that one just slightly. I'm not really sure why I went for the seven in the corner. I do, looking at it now, I do like the side more than this, but. Yeah, because you have to contend with a bit of an awkward cut on the seven. Totally fine. It's very, very playable still. Played that with good speed, judged the cut well, didn't mess with the side pocket, not flirting with the scratch. Overplayed this one, let my stroke out a bit too much on this one. I could have gotten really cute straight in on the nine, but you're fine. Don't let that kind of stuff fluster you. If you end up with a makeable shot, it's good enough, right? Don't let perfect be the enemy of good enough. Make that ball and get up a game. 5-2. Good break. Lost the cue ball a little bit. It popped over to the top long rail. A long shot on the one. That does not lend natural position for the two. You could try to dig into this cue ball, go low outside, low right hand spin to draw back down for the two. It's risky to increase your chances of missing the one 
don't go for that. I must be lining up a safe. Yeah, I decided to put him up above the four. That was well played. I did not calculate the one ball coming into the eight. I think the intention was to put him up above the four where I am now, and I like hoping that the one was going to come back around and down table. So it still worked out great. I was really just playing the cue ball, not the object ball. He makes a good hit on the one. Sends it into the pack here. I don't have a makeable cut. So we're probably looking at another safety. Focus on the cue ball. Roll it down below the two and the nine. That makes sense. Came a little thick into the two. But there's a there's a lot that can go right. That was the that was the correct play. So we had the back side of the one. Made a good hit on that. And I've got a cut on the one now. The cut sends me towards the nine and the five. So that's what I'm looking at. If I cut it in such a way that I come off the nine ball, maybe it sends me towards the two. That would be nice. It would be really nice if it worked out that way. So that was good. Sent me full into the nine. Was able to let some speed out that way in the hopes that it, the cue ball would have come off the nine on the top side of the two. But I've still got an open cut shot on the two here that sends me towards the three. That worked, the cut was good. I think I could have used a bit more outside. A bit of left spin would have brought me towards the three ball. And now I'm really long on the three with just a bit of an angle and nothing that sends me towards the four. So do you just, Try a hero shot here, dude. I think that's what we're going for. I was going to do like crazy draw shot to just like bring it all the way up table. Not a great play. I think I'm just trying to press the advantage here. Knowing that I'm ahead and feeling a little bit better about my chances of running tables. Not the best play. Oh, well, we tried to cut that in. Where are we going to end up? I do remember that I indeed I had a uh, cut on the three here. So you make this cut, and you, you can let your stroke out on this one. Yeah, and I had to judge. I knew that the cut only took me into the left side of this pocket. I'll come down. Do I want to roll towards the 5 and the 8, or do I want to try to straighten it out? And straight down table back up for the 4. So well, well judged there, the cut worked out. 6 gets in the way, which is unfortunate. Still a makeable cut, it's pretty thin. But you could also play a safe here if you really wanted to. Put him behind the 6 and the 8. I think that was the idea. Sold out, though. Not a good safety. Didn't control the speed on the cue ball very well. Tried the cut on the 4. 5's going, though. So yeah, locked in the five and is hooked on the four. So a bit of karmic uh, retribution there. <laughs> Keeps things even. Gonna have to kick at the four. 
Are you just hoping it'll go in the other corner? Yeah, he came at it with some pace. He's just trying to make something happen here. Leaves me a workable shot on the four ball. So you can punch this in. Cue ball comes back over. Play the six down. That top left corner pocket. Just got to think about how to get back above the eight. Because the eight does go in this side. I had to step away. I think I got the, somebody was playing on the other table. I wanted to give him some space. So I come check my line on the six again, see where I want to be. I've been behind the four. I know how to hit that ball. Good authoritative stroke there. Cue ball dies on the rail, which is totally fine. We're well above the six. We've got a little bit of an angle to work with. So what I do is come over and look at where I want to be on the eight. I know that if I come through the six, good high ball, smooth stroke, it's going to come down table and float back up. Pretty much exactly like that. I don't want to mess with the scratch, though. I could have straightened that out a little bit more. I could have used a touch of inside, but you don't really need it if you're judging your speed well. And I had a perfectly fine cut on the 8, natural shape on the 9. It's good out. Here you go. On the hill. Losing my cue ball. Cue ball keeps going over to the right side. That's something I'm learning from this match too, is I'm working my nine ball break and keep the cue ball in the center of the table. So thin cut on the two, the three, I don't remember if the three goes, but you can definitely cut this to send the cue ball around and back, come across multiple rails. I'm trying to hold it's tough. You're okay to let your stroke out here. Just get back on the three. Worst case, you play a safe on the three. Oh, I missed that one. Come on. Leave him a little tough on the two. Doesn't have an easy option. Oh, he's got that give up stroke now. He just kind of pops at the two. And leaves me long and hooked behind the six. I see it from my chair, and I know that I'm going to be behind the six, and I know I'm on the hill, so I figure I'm going to bear down, and I'm going to make something happen in this one. So I size up a long jump shot, 2-9 combination. Check this one out. Much more comfortable with the elbow up jump technique than the dart. Boom, straight in, man. You like that? Do YouTube things about it. Uh, that one felt good, I have to say. Uh, that, that winning a match on that kind of shot always feels good. Overall, there was some weird stuff in this match though, right? Some crunchy stuff. Um, so super interesting. It's It's really valuable to look back on this and Lots to learn from this kind of match, but uh, overall played well, good kind of, you know, respectful match here. Nothing weird happened. Um, and uh, yeah, I would, I would look forward to playing him again. I'm sure I'll see him again at some point in the season, but felt good about this one. Hope you guys all enjoyed this. There's plenty more Masters content on the way. As I mentioned, we're gunning for Vegas, so hopefully we'll get some playoff matches in there. Put those up on the channel. And then uh, we'll, we'll see where that takes us. So thanks for checking me out. Feel free to stick around. There's a lot more coming down. See you soon.